In the Starship show this week the plans for standalone ship to ship combat Game Rant interviews developer Dan Govier and Fleet Yard's development roadmap features on this weeks livestream. After completing its one month run the Starship Simulator Kickstarter campaign ended last week on Friday the 19th of April. The aim of the Kickstarter campaign was to pull together a fairly modest fund for game development at least of £65,000 to allow Fleet Yard Studios to bring in the outside manpower and expertise they need to build the project to a place where it could confidently enter early access on Steam. The 1 to 1 scale galaxy simulation, FTL capable prototype starship complete with a partially fleshed out interior that you can experience in the demo version that is on Steam right now was built by just one developer Dan Govier over the course of 2 to 3 years or so. As a proof of concept it works beautifully but in order to take the project to the next level fleshing out the crew and roles and their associated gameplay and filling the galaxy with exploration and science and things to discover Fleet Yard need a lot more crew members themselves and that is what the Kickstarter was for. As we reported last week the Kickstarter campaign had already more than ably demonstrated the appetite for the finished product was there by smashing through its initial goal in just 3 days but the rate at which the Kickstarter stretch goals were falling as the campaign progressed made it blindingly apparent very early on that it wasn't stopping there. By the time the end of the Kickstarter cycled around last Friday evening the campaign had raised a staggering £402,000 and funded 4 of its stretch goals for the early access release of the game. The first 3 stretch goals room scale VR, shuttles and alien structures and planetary landings we covered in last weeks show but since then the final funded stretch goal of ship vs ship game mode was also funded and as the campaign reached that target Fleet Yard Studios tweeted out a more detailed description of exactly what their plans for the new mode entail. While Starship Simulator is first and foremost a game focused on peaceful exploration, science and discovery the galaxy is not without its perils and eventually players will likely find themselves in a combat scenario. In order to balance and polish that element of the game Fleet Yard planned to introduce a standalone tactical combat training game mode. In the game mode two non FTL capable military ships will face off against one another with the objective being to disable, board and then capture the bridge of your opponents vessel. The game will be accessible via the multiplayer menu and the opposing starship can be populated by players or NPCs. Set in a random procedurally generated area of space the ships will start outside of weapon range and then each must work to disable the opponent vessel. Once a ship is disabled the next phase of the assault can begin wherein shuttles are launched from the victorious vessel and the disabled vessel is boarded. From here on the attacking crew must fight their way to the defending ships bridge and hold that bridge for the duration of a 60 second timer. Any players that are incapacitated during the engagement will respawn in their respective medical facilities. It should prove to be a huge amount of fun and Fleet Yard even have hopes that the standalone mode could perhaps one day become a standalone eSport all of its own. The internet has been awash with articles and interviews around Starship since the Kickstarter went live and this last week as the campaign drew towards its conclusion was naturally no exception. One of the best of the bunch this week came from the website Game Rant where Starship developer Dan Govier talked to the site's contributing regular Caitlin Kivel about the game, his hopes for its reach beyond simple entertainment, where the game touches real science, Dan's interest in architecture and engineering, his influences for Starship Simulator as a sci-fi fan which probably aren't where you think they might be and more. 
Of particular interest in the interview are Fleet Yard's plans for different Starship additions to the game that will introduce vessels with very different roles and aesthetics to the Magellan class ship that we've seen already and also the discussion around expansions to the game that will introduce a more militaristic storyline and also Fleet Yard's plans for a space trader expansion in the future. You'll find the full interview with Dan Govier from Game Rant linked in the description below this video. In case you didn't know all through the Kickstarter campaign Fleet Yard Studios have been live streaming the ongoing development of the game. During the streams which can sometimes be up to 5 hours long Dan and Claire answer as many questions from the assembled community as they can about Starship Simulator and their plans for it. It's actually been a great way for anyone new to the project to understand the scope of both the early access version and the full version of the game and Fleet Yard's plans for both and how the project as a whole will be funded after release. This week however in an interesting twist on the familiar dev livestreams we'd become used to seeing Fleet Yard Studios instead streamed the creation of a roadmap and game design document for the audience whilst again answering the multitude of questions from the assembled viewers. If you've seen any of the interviews with the team at Fleet Yard such as the one from Caitlin Kivell at Game Rant that we mentioned in this very edition of the Starship Show then you'll already know that Fleet Yard are very keen on the principle of open development. In the context of Starship Simulator this has been defined in Dan Govier's own words as quote ...the community can see exactly what we're doing when we're doing it unquote. The document that Dan was working on in this weeks livestream is being shared for anyone to view meaning that eventually we'll have an overview of what is being developed overall, what is currently being worked on and what will be worked on next and what comes after that and after that etc. In real terms for backers of the project this will literally translate to playable code on the hard drive of their PC as one of the other aspects of Fleet Yard's open development is their plan to constantly update a working copy of the current state of the game to backers via Steam. I've linked to Fleet Yard's livestreams in the description below this video as well as the working document that Dan began on the livestream this week if you're curious to take a look. Were you following live as the Kickstarter ended last week? What did you learn in the Game Rant interview that you didn't know already and are you an audience regular for Fleet Yard's live streams? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you want to directly support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. That's it for now. Clear all moorings, thrusters to one quarter, helm, take us out.